It may appear to be in 3D, but it's not. I've created it specifically for technical presentations, featuring symbolic representations of cutting-edge technologies such as AI, data, blockchain, and more. At first glance, it may seem like a complex arrangement of shapes, but it's actually not. Upon closer examination, you'll notice that I've duplicated just two basic shapes multiple times to create this intricate pattern. Likewise, the more advanced-looking shape you see here is also created through repetition. You can explore similar techniques to craft captivating presentations as well. In Affinity Designer you can see the Tools panel on the left with all the required tools. On the right panel you can find many tabs but the most important one is the Layers tab which I will be using a lot for stacking the layers. On the bottom right you can find many tabs again, but the important tab for me is the Swatches panel and the FX panel for Apply Effects. To initiate the process, let's commence with creating an isometric rounded rectangle. Access the right panel, then navigate to the Isometric tab and enable the isometric grid from there. Ensure that you select the Edit in Plane option. Now, go to the Shapes panel and choose the rectangle shape, then draw it. Next, select the corner from the top and adjust it to around 10 to 15%. After that, duplicate the rectangle, which should now have a rounded shape, and position it below the first rectangle. You will notice that I am in the process of crafting a rounded rectangular box. Remove any color fill from the rectangles as we currently only require the stroke or outline. Now, I will explain how to divide the rectangle into two halves. To accomplish this, we will utilize the knife tool. First, draw a guide, which is essentially a reference line for alignment, to identify the center of the rectangle. Using the knife tool, click at the center on both sides of the rectangle. Subsequently, select the anchor points towards the top portion and click on Break the Curve. This action will divide the path, making it easier to separate the rectangle into two halves. Select the points and delete them, resulting in a half-rectangle path. In this step, I've chosen the anchor points, and all that remains is to click on Break the Curve. After doing that, simply proceed to delete the points. I trust that the process up to this point has been straightforward. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask by leaving a comment. Now, let's complete the rounded rectangle box. Begin by duplicating the shape using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus J and position it below the original shape. Overlay it onto the bottom rectangle. You can then safely delete the bottom rectangle as it is no longer required. Next, utilize the pen tool to connect both of these shapes. Simply draw using the pen tool, following what you see on the screen. Make sure to draw at both ends, and consider zooming in for a more precise view of the path and anchor points. Taking your time during this step will ensure a perfect result. Once the shapes are joined, select all the points and use the Join option located in the top panel. Failing to join the points can cause the shape to break, and some features may not work correctly with the shape. Once the shape is ready, duplicate it and flip it. You can duplicate it using the Ctrl plus J keyboard shortcut. The flip option can be found in the top panel, or you can right-click and select the flip option from there. Now, place the two shapes together to create a rounded rectangle box. Well done. Now, the following step involves applying a gradient color. The purpose of applying this gradient color is to imbue the object with a realistic appearance and sensation. When you utilize gradient colors on a shape, you essentially have the ability to manipulate shades, simulate the influence of light, generate reflections, and attend to other intricate details. The application of gradient colors has the capability to transform any object into something that appears three-dimensional. In this particular instance, I'm employing a five-stop gradient to achieve this desired effect. You'll notice that I've positioned a color palette at the top, which serves as the basis for this tutorial. If you focus on the lower edge or the central section, you'll observe that I've utilized white color to accentuate the reflection effect. Given that this is a corner, accentuating the reflection of light in this manner makes logical sense. This is a prime example of how you can manipulate gradients to craft a visually striking and impactful result. I hope everything has been clarified and is easily comprehensible thus far. Now, let's proceed to the next step, which involves crafting the top layer or, as you might refer to it, the lid of the rounded rectangular box. Begin by creating a rounded rectangle and filling it with a gradient color that complements the established scheme. At this juncture, take the opportunity to carefully design the gradient color flow. It would be beneficial if you could invest some time in crafting the gradient color transition in a manner that closely mimics the appearance of a realistic surface. 
If you are relatively new to this, grasping the nuances of color flow may require a bit of patience and practice. However, if you are already familiar with other design tools or have experience working on presentations where gradients were used, you'll likely find this task to be considerably more manageable. Now, let's proceed with the creation of the middle section of this shape, which is a straightforward process. To begin, zoom into focus on the central area. Then, duplicate the top rounded rectangle shape. Reduce its size and position it in the center, ensuring that it aligns perfectly with the shape. Subsequently, you can subtract this duplicated shape from the top rectangle, resulting in the creation of a window-like opening within it. Currently, this entire shape lacks a base rectangle, but the decision to include one is entirely at your discretion. Personally, I initially designed a base, but I found it unnecessary and, as a result, removed the bottom rounded rectangle. You have the flexibility to fine-tune the middle section, adjust the sides, and modify the gradient color to your liking. You have now the flexibility the to fine-tune the middle section, considering adjust that the, the gradients could be further and modify improved. the gradient color Feel to your liking. Feel free to experiment and test different options to achieve the best possible result. Now, let's consider how we can take this design to the next level, making it more advanced and futuristic. I'm contemplating adding a top layer with a luminous outline, and I'll guide you through the process. To begin, insert a rectangular shape and ensure that its edges remain rounded. From the top panel, select the rounded edges option and set them to a value between 10 to 15%. What's convenient with Affinity Designer is that it automatically adopts the gradient color, saving you time. You can, of course, fine-tune the gradient if needed, but what I'm particularly interested in is creating an outline for this shape. Head over to the Effects panel and choose the Outer Glow setting. Select a color from the palette and adjust the radius of the effect. Following that, tweak the opacity to your preference. Once you've completed these adjustments, navigate to the Swatches panel and apply both a fill and an outline. This process will produce a striking glass effect on the top panel, allowing you to see through it. To enhance the overall appeal of this technical artwork, let's explore how to create a captivating glass effect. Here's what you can do. To start, duplicate the entire shape. Ensure that you've successfully made a duplicate by pressing Ctrl plus J, and then slightly shift it downward, as indicated on the screen. Now, reduce the opacity setting for this duplicated shape and observe the visual impact it produces. The primary design of the shape is now finalized. To further enhance its visual appeal, we can introduce some supplementary elements. Given the technological nature of this shape, we have the opportunity to incorporate elements such as LED lights, patterns, shapes, and more. Let's initiate this enhancement process by adding a small circle on the right side of the shape. I've already chosen the isometric right side and activated the Edit in Plane option. Consequently, the circle will be automatically generated in an isometric format. You can apply color to it either as a fill or a stroke. In my case, I'm using a fill that matches the color palette we've been working with. If you prefer, you can also apply quick effects, such as a glow. Now, duplicate this circle and position it linearly by repeatedly pressing Ctrl plus J, Affinity Designer will intelligently arrange these circles in a pattern as you duplicate them. You can also replicate the rows to create a complete pattern. Following this, I'm planning to duplicate this pattern and paste it on the opposite side as well. To achieve this, you'll need to flip it so that it points towards the left side. I hope these instructions are clear and helpful for you. I hope these instructions are clear and helpful for you. To elevate the visual appeal even more, I've decided to incorporate a 3D effect using the options available in the Quick Effects panel located Likewise, on the right side of the interface. Likewise, you have the option interface. to craft another shape. Specifically, this time I've applied the 3D effect to the upper section of the height, shape, and you I must give say it a slightly distinct the overall appearance and size quite to nicely. add variety. Specifically, this approach I've allows you to generate multiple and analogous shapes, section of this shape, ultimately and composing I must say a comprehensive diagram with a technology-driven theme. I've briefly demonstrated how I edited and amalgamated these shapes to swiftly produce a final diagram. We've come to the conclusion of this video, and I trust you found it enjoyable and informative. Don't hesitate to download the PowerPoint version of this diagram from the description below. Additionally, 
I kindly encourage you to subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends and fellow students, enabling them to also reap the benefits of our content. Thank you for joining us in this video, and we look forward to seeing you in our next one.